This breakfast that the astronauts are having, we assume, is a typical one for them. It uh, consists of a fruit cocktail, bacon squares, cinnamon toast bread cubes, cocoa, and an orange drink. It's not a bad breakfast. It's a better one than we had here in CBS News Space Center. It, uh, it, these things are dehydrated foods, uh, are bite-sized prepared foods. The bacon squares and the cinnamon toast bread cubes are, are uh, uh, bite-sized portions. Uh, they are made that way to avoid any uh, crumbs flying in space in the weightless uh, environment of a spacecraft in orbit around a moon or in orbit around the Earth, for that matter. Uh, the fruit cocktail, cocoa, and orange drink are reconstituted uh, from uh, dried foods with which water is added, dehydrated foods. We expect to hear something from Mission Control soon. We're, here it is now. Less than five minutes away from a loss of signal on our first revolution. Houston, uh, you're four minutes and 40 seconds from LOS. Uh, I'd like a reconfirmation on your S-band aux switch in the down voice backup position, over. Uh, negative, it's in the normal voice. We'll go down voice backup. Uh, Roger, request you leave it there forever, over. This is Houston. All systems are go. You're still go for Rev 2. Over. Thank you. circle there seems to go through the moon is that this is a real-time representation of what is happening in space and the moon of course is moving around the earth when that circle was originally traced on uh, this representation you're seeing uh, the moon was right in the center of the circle in that time that has passed which is now almost two hours uh, the moon has moved that far Here is an entire representation. When the, when the spacecraft was launched on Saturday morning from Merritt Island, the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, the moon was way over there in what would be the lower left-hand corner of your picture. It has moved around to the point now where you see it. You can see from that how accurate had to be the firing from uh, Cape Kennedy from Merritt Island there uh, to lead the moon to intercept it at just the right point. And it was so perfect that only two of the four mid-course corrections that were planned along the translunar trajectory needed to be used. And the last one uh, this morning was of such a small uh, firing that it was almost insignificant. It just added another, uh, uh, slowed down the spacecraft a mile or two uh, per hour. Apparently, uh, communication uh, has been lost with the spacecraft a little earlier than had been anticipated on this pass around the moon. The first uh, loss of signal, LOS, as they refer to it in uh, space parlance, came exactly at the second 
predicted. That sounded like a... Still have communication. This communication is provided by those four little saucers you see at the top of the spacecraft there. Those, those four antenna on their stand, spring loaded, pop open when the the spacecraft with its service module separate from the third stage of the Saturn boost vehicle. This was one of the first critical moments of this flight, was whether they would pop open as planned. Apollo 8 Houston, 10 seconds to LOS, all systems go. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 70 hours, uh, 56 minutes, and now under the flight, uh, we've had LOS uh, with Apollo 8. At uh, this time, uh, we would like to uh, play back uh, those uh, historic first words of insertion into lunar orbit as we heard them here in Mission Control. Apollo 8, Houston, over. Houston, Roger, 169.1 by 60.5. Good to hear your voice. These have been Apollo Control Houston. Now we'll switch uh, back and play back some of uh, Jim's, Jim Lovell's descriptions as he viewed uh, the lunar surface. Well, from, we uh, played that for you just a moment ago with that excellent uh, description of the sites he was seeing uh, by and Dr. Shoemaker out at Set Propulsion Laboratory. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 8 will continue in a moment. There have been some dramatic words uh, spoken uh, this morning between Apollo 8 and uh, the ground. Uh, earlier today, uh, there obviously was the concern that has been expressed from time to time by aircraft commander, spacecraft commander, Frank Borman, uh, regarding the uh, the engine that must put them into the orbit around the moon and get them out again. Uh, not uh, over concern, but the concern of a good test pilot for his machinery. And uh, when they went through the last checklist before they went behind the uh, far side of the moon and out of communication with Earth for the first firing of that engine, up from the ground, from uh, the communicator with the spacecraft to himself as an astronaut, which is the way this thing works, and Marine Major Jerry Carr, he said to them, to give them confidence, you are riding the best bird we can find. Meaning that in all of the checks they have had since the launch of uh, this Apollo 8, uh, they have checked it out and decided that in every part of its function, it's as good as any that, uh, that has been built. And then a little bit later, uh, when they were going around the moon, uh, oh, the, there was one point before they got to that, uh, which was kind of startling, to us uh, here on Earth, I think even to Mission Control, uh, Jim Lovell noted, uh, you know, we still haven't seen the moon. They've been out there almost for three full days, and at that point, when they were hurtling down on the moon at 5,000 miles an hour and were just 300 miles away from it, they still had not in all of that time seen the moon at all. Uh, the position and attitude of the spacecraft, it seems most unbelievable, had not been so arranged and tilted that they could take a look at the moon. Uh, curiosity must have certainly uh, been great among the spacecraft crew, and we can only guess and surmise that maybe they simply deliberately held off and said, uh, let's make it a great big surprise and look at it the first time as we go around it. Uh, certainly, uh, they could have tilted it and taken a look if they'd wanted to before that. Uh, then as they uh, got to the surface of the moon and were about to disappear on the far side, the voice of Bill Anders, the youngest member of this crew and the only one who had not flown in space before and what a first trip he's having, he said over the speaker back to the 
ground control. Thanks a lot, troops. We'll see you on the other side. And then Apollo 8 went behind the moon. What, what a moment that was. Apollo 8 has been around the moon now once. It's on the far side of the moon and coming around for the second pass on the face of the moon that we see here from Earth and over which men have gawked and dreamed for all these years.